Second half, jurisdiction over what? Reference or what are appealed to in the wider culture. And this, I will skip forward, can be either ideas, materials, or ideas about materials. So the internal material reference. Um, moving on, I have a list of 15 internal reference that we can think about. There's an abbreviation, gender, ethnicity, sexuality, handicap status, age, religion, language, ideology, materials, class, violence, territory, honor, many kinds of honor. And I introduced new ways of thinking about stratification and figurations, that positions. Positions can stratify and create jurisdictions from positions in space and scale versus other scales in space and the particular formal institutional and formal policy arrangements of those jurisdictions as an agreement or alliance with their followers. And here's, uh, I don't know if you can see the yellow letters, but those are the previous abbreviations that I put, uh, G-E-S-H-A-R. All those will flow down one side between one position stratifying as a certain particular strategic appeal to groups below, with obviously you know, contention amongst elites for other versions of the same. So you can look over all the social reference, and you can look at the social science of jurisdictional issues. Um, the origins of this sociology of jurisdictions and these many reference are done in four areas, and in Eliza's own work in two areas. Um, here is a map where I see in the literature you have four different areas which you could draw upon. State, state formation, state demise, not just, you know, that's one empirical zone, um, what I would call the sociology of legitimate authority or state science. You can draw upon many things, state consumption, a consumptive infrastructure view that comes a lot from environmental sociology, uh, the sociology of consumption analyzed under the term consumptive flows, particularly dealing with ecological modernization research, uh, though inclusive of eco-Marxist conflict-based views of materials as well. Skipping forward, finance, fiscal sociology. Fascinating work's been done in fiscal sociology over changing jurisdictions, uh, over money and taxation. Um, those, those four areas across 15 different reference, I think, can be synthesized. In Elias, you have game models, Elias' views about jurisdictional formation. In game models, I argue, and civilizing process is an idea of jurisdictional change, though in typically a few reference about state politics only uh, and bodily comportment over time. In my work, I try to advance the synthesis of these issues and a sociology of jurisdictions in these two books, Toward a Biracial State, 2005, and Ecological Revolution, 2009. Um, 2005, first book on green constitutional engineering. Um, I published this separate book before my dissertation. And Ecological Revolution is a green theory of history showing a common cross cultural historical development, political change, and cultural change involved in environmental degradation and environmental amelioration over time. And the data was from China, Japan, Korea, and Europe over. 3,000 to 2,500 years, different segments, 3,000 years total. Um, so first I see a series of comparative historical books. Um, those are the covers of the books. Um, very, very blue and green, right? Um, green constitutional engineering and comparative historical cases. Common, similar, socially created risks in the past. Um, however, I want to talk about the trialectical issue. This is the methods that I've sort of developed to analyze this. Um, I'll skip that part. I'll have five points, I'll skip that. So I say that jurisdictions can serve as an infrastructural political economy, and we can jettison Smith and Marx if we want some critical or uh, way of analyzing a uh, political economy. Is there an uneconomic reductionist view of commodities and markets? Uh, anyway, here's my list of 19 different social figurational positions that materials have to go through. And what is yellow? are the two areas that most economists analyze, the like manufacturing consumer aspects. There's so many laws that require material flow to go through, financing, transportation, free choice issues, sometimes extraction is not possible in certain areas. You know, why choose this material over another one? Maybe the taxation is not right for you, so you don't manufacture. There's a lot of other things happening. Um, consumptive infrastructure discussion. Uh, there's nothing abstract about commodities. I think there's different contention among different commodity categories. It's hard to read that, but that is about 92 different raw material substrate sets. You know, conflict between textiles, oil, metals, garbage, soils, dirts, drugs, infant food, animal food, all that. Um, so, back 
the third section, historical patterns, removing the false dichotomy of tears. Uh, both Elias and Marx draw very much on tears. And I was surprised, you know, I, I loved what is sociology, the section where Elias is talking about game models, but Elias prefaces this by saying these are heuristic models that they're not being justified by any empirical casework. So I like to see myself arguing, here's some empirical casework adjudicating if that's so or not. Um, both Elias has upper and lower tiers, Marx the same thing, but with economic reductionism. And instead I see a trialectical contention between three different positions trying to organize jurisdiction with or against each other. Um, it's best to do this with a comparison of Marx and myself because Marx had a philosophy of history that most still you know, intuitively follow and understand. And I offer another based on comparative history of particular cases. And because Marx had a conflict based stratification, I talk about conflict and cooperation. Not only conflict. Okay. And because Marx is quite functional and philosophical, it's more historical and case specific. Um, we will stop on this graph then. So if that's Marx's dialectics, you know, or Elias, you could substitute there his ideas of you know, the clientelism that had developed out of uh, game models. I would argue that historically you see a lot of divisions within elites on both spatial issues and scale of their jurisdiction in opposition to each other. Expanding one demotes the other. And also, instead of a common lower class, you typically see very regionalized frameworks of opposition amongst each other, and obviously, sometimes an alliance. So you have split horizontal issues, as well as potential, very transient, vertical frameworks of jurisdictions between particular strategies of central authority, which might be, for the present citizens, makes that bigger, marginalized aristocratic, more regional frameworks, but over time you can have a new settlements. And uh, the double line is meant to indicate hegemony, hegemony in these larger dynamics held together by particular choices of recurrence. And uh, over time, I argue there's a cyclical aspect that gets larger over time. Notice these are the same triangles over time based on different hegemonies over time. And the fourth one is the repetition of the previous cycle at a much larger scale. I find this as part of an environmental degradation process. Um, that's the person's done. I have, uh, so, so instead of unified upper classes, they're split. And I want to go to one last slide, if I may, on the final. I can't, oh, I have to write this here. So. <coughs> And a conclusion, you know, it's towards Elias' desire for resilience, both of social science consilience, and also appealing to many different middle range sections of sociology that are already doing this. But they're not doing it in a synthetic way, and also for interscientific consilience, like in the infrastructural political economy ideas, mixing material and ideological issues, and what I didn't talk about and show a different diagram the spatial scale. Um, first, it helps heal the sociological divisions we're all complaining about. And um, for Elias to really be a serious challenge, I think we need to provide a model that always appeals to as many different reference as possible. How would Elias deal with you know, changes in the figurations of the family over time and connected to the larger figurational politics or any of those 15 different reference? And uh, closing suggestions, a future conference in jurisdictional sociology is suggested inviting those four areas I already discussed also combined with Elias scholars to discuss particular historical cases over time or sections geographically or particular reference, whole sections based on people interested in gender construction in jurisdiction over time and the laws around gender. Help me, or in other continuing conversations, find a better academic home or publisher for a wayward environmental sociologist. And thank you very much. Thank you so much. Outline here. Okay. I have time for a couple of questions. Andrew and then, yes, Andrew first. Uh, well, thank you, Mark. I mean, I think I want to say a few because there was such a lot there. Yeah. I, I couldn't absorb um, a, a lot of it. Could we go back to the slide that was the title introduction? Would you mind doing that? Yeah. That's that slide. Because I think I want to make Stephen Dunn very happy and, and do a little bit of uh, philosophical analytical, philosophical analysis. Well, I want to check first that I, that I understand.
understood it, but I pray at the right. Okay. <laughs> I have no mouse here. If you look at this, at the second and third bullet points. Uh -huh. Jurisdictional figurations. This is, this is conceptual analysis, basically. Jurisdictional figurations are suggesting to, to me as a kind of innocent here that there are different types of figurations, and some are jurisdictional and some are not. But when we move down to the next bullet point, <coughs> figurations are jurisdictions. You're running the two concepts together. Yes. And I thought at one point you were suggesting further on in the presentation that you know figurations have jurisdictional dimensions to them. Yes. So I was kind of unsure about how those concepts are working. And, and what exactly is the relationship between figuration and and jurisdiction. Well, I'm slightly well, lost on that, to be honest with you. Okay, well, the, well here first Elias's conception and what I feel I'm adding to that. Um, the figurations typically have been seen as a singular issue, I think. You're studying a figuration over time and a lack of ways of analyzing it critically or, I think, in terms of its direction or where it's going or its purpose or whether it's successful or not in integrating people. I mean, figurations can be tyrannous, or they can be representative. So I think that within this idea of Elias' figurations, you have concepts of culture, habitus, intergenerational transmission. All these I see in a jurisdictional figuration. People are being taught what are the proper political hierarchies in their daily lives. And uh, if you look historically at that, there are crux moments in history where there are great contentions over who defines the future in terms of jurisdictions. And uh, I find it interesting to research those dynamics of how within the figuration, it's someone's choice or strategy, successful or not, sometimes terribly unsuccessful, to implement in other people's minds a particular idea that they are legitimate or that other groups are illegitimate so the, the political aspects call for an idea of jurisdiction. Like one person does something for the others and that they have legitimate connections to it. I'm just trying to bring out a political science level to and an institutional level to and cultural level to realize its figurations in contention with other versions at the same time. That the jurisdictions don't exist singularly. That there are multiple figurations sort of in a war of position with each other for either representative or unrepresentative power over different groups. I hope that's it's not clear. We have a question here. Um, Perhaps I misinterpreted you, but uh, you mentioned that uh, figuration approach could uh, inform ecological modernization theory. Mm -hmm. I think figurations will have a problem with that on, on two grounds. One is that there's a kind of a, it, it's, it's there's, a, there's a, a strong or if heavy prescriptive normative element to ecological modernization theory. I think uh, many figurations will have difficulty with that. Secondly, ecological modernization theory is underpinned by structuration theory and Rube Beck's work, and that will be anathema to, to many figurationists. So what I, was I, I don't think they can okay. be I just to, melded onto it. I'm not, uh, no, I, what I was said was I was drawing upon the ideas of infrastructural flows, both within eco-Marxism and ecological modernization, instead of seeing them as right. That they both have views of commodities that are highly con contextualized through particular institutions, through how laws organize them. So I was drawing upon that to consider the flows of materials as a very jurisdictional issue within these figurations, within any versions of some of them would be more sustainable, hopefully like environmental modernization. Um, Eco-Marxists have analyzed versions that are not. That's, that's what I meant. I hope that's the clarification. I'm drawing upon the idea of micro, meso, macro flows of materials that ecological modernization describes. Industrial ecology is perhaps another area you might Okay. Be.